Parents of a New York college student are desperately pleading for help to find their son. Kenny Dillon Jr. is studying abroad in eastern France just outside Lyon. His family says they haven't heard from him since November 27th. So CNN's national correspondent Jason Carroll is with us now. So, uh, Jason, what do you know? Yeah, it's a lot to unpack here, guys. The State Department is monitoring the situation. As you can imagine, along with French authorities, Ken Delon's Jr.'s parents say he is, it is just completely out of character for him not to have been in contact. They have not heard from him since last month. Uh, what we're about to show you is perhaps the last known image of Delon. It shows him just as he was entering a sporting goods store uh, in the south of France. As you can see from that picture there, previous picture, he was wearing a red jacket and a gray knit cap. That was on December 3rd. So here's just sort of a quick recap of what we know at this point. Delon is a senior at St. John Fisher University uh, in Rochester, New York. His family launched a website detailing his last known whereabouts. Uh, they say they last heard from him actually on November 27th. That was via WhatsApp. Uh, that's when he apparently boarded a train headed for, La for Valence, France. Two days later, the public prosecutor's office in Grenoble, that's the city where Delon was studying French, uh, they had opened an, uh, an investigation after his fellow students had reported him missing. Then on November 30th, there was a ping from his phone, and then nothing until he was spotted again on the surveillance cameras at that sporting goods store in the south of France. St. John Fisher University says it's working closely with the American Institute of Foreign Study on the investigation. AIFS saying in a statement, we are working with local law enforcement who have begun a search, and we are hoping for his swift and safe return. Again, the State Department is working with French authorities, his community, and his family praying at this point for his safe return. Biana. Oh, all right. Jason Carroll, thank you. And joining me now is Kenny DeLand Jr.'s mother, Carol Laws, and his father, Ken DeLand Sr., is joining us on the phone. Uh, thank you both for being with me. Uh, we said that uh, the last time you spoke with your son was November 27th. Um, Carol, what can you tell me about that conversation? You know, it was like any normal conversation that we've had. He's telling me um, about the time that he's having in Europe and um, he was looking forward to coming home for Christmas and starting to um, put the plans in place for that. Mm. And uh, before he went silent over the last couple of weeks, uh, Ken, it, it, was it typical for there to be long stretches without hearing from your son? No, I, I would hear from him frequently. Um, not every day, maybe, necessarily, um, but every other day, at the very least, where he would check in and see how I was doing, and I would ask him how he was doing, and he uh, enjoyed all the international travel that... Um, this trip had provided him, and uh, he took lots of pictures. Ken, the, um, the public prosecutor there in Grenoble uh, said this. The young man reportedly told several people that he had arrived in France underprepared and was having difficulty making friends. Did he talk to you about any challenges he was having in France, or do you think that might have any role in uh, his silence or disappearance? It's hard to say. Um, we can all speculate. Um, I'm not really aware of, of um, you know, I, I, I understand he took French um, in high school. He tried to prepare himself for this trip. Um, could you have known French better? Yes. Um, but uh, he had some friends that he traveled with, with the trips that were associated with the AIFS. Um, including Paris, and he went to Lyon, um, and uh, he was on a when when there was a break with school, he also went to Italy. But he did that on him on his own, and um, I wasn't aware of him not being able to make friends easily. So I, to answer your question, I, I was not aware of that. Mm. Carol. Um we know that uh, from the reporting that he was with a host family. Has the host family been off, uh, able to offer any useful information? 
I haven't spoke with the host family. Hmm. Uh, so to answer that, not really. No, I haven't heard anything from them. Okay. Um, do Our, authorities... Go ahead, Ken. I was going to say the liaison through AIFS had, had spoken with uh, the host mother. Um, and from what I understand, uh, her, her English, um, you know, was not so good. She was predominantly French speaking. Um, so we haven't had a lot of contact with yeah. with that person and there's been uh, a little bit of a restriction in, as to what we've been um able to find out with this case with the privacy act in place yeah you say there's been a restriction um carol i wonder are, are you satisfied considering the restrictions um, with the amount of information that you are receiving from the state department that you are receiving from french authorities I feel like I'm not really receiving any information. Hmm. Um, yeah, that... it, it's it's been very difficult. Um, you know, we've been really someone else has been stuck in the middle um, to do the speaking for us, and it was it's been difficult to get really any information back. Names, hmm. who they actually really spoke to. Carol, have, have authorities there in France, because have they told you if they believe your son is still in France? No. I can answer that. No. The answer to that question would be no. I've, I've reached out to the, to the embassy um, several times. I even spoke with them this morning. Uh, somewhere between probably 4.30 a.m. I called the embassy again. Um, there's there's no reciprocation of information. Again, that Privacy Act prevents uh, disclosure of information. They, you, can, you can give them information, but they cannot give you information. Um, I've called local, the local police departments, and the same thing is in effect in, in the French um, police departments that are local to that yeah. area in which it was last seen. So... Um, it's, it's, it's very limiting. Yeah. Carol, do, do you believe that your son is, is in danger? I would like to not think so. Um, but when you don't know, you just don't know <laughs> when you haven't heard from him. Yeah. Uh, Ken, one more for you. You uh, have launched this website uh, to get any tips, to get any information. Have tips been coming in through the website, and are any of these tips, any of the information um, credible, leading to any solid leads? <clears throat> so there, there has been tips that, that, that come in, and I try to pass the tips on. Um, I don't know how they check out because, um, you know, I've sent some tips to... Um, to my agent, the FBI agent that I've been in contact with, and uh, I try to forward them to the embassy, and then they get dispersed from there. I'm hoping that um, Interpol has gotten involved, and um, we've been interviewed by several news media stations, um, you know, and we're, we're hoping we can with with your help and the help of others we can get the the word out there well the website is findkendeland.com um carol laws ken deland senior i mean uh, we're showing more pictures here uh of course if you have any information you can go to the website you can call authorities and they will get it to other people who need it uh, he was supposed to leave france in just a couple of weeks 